guys and welcome to Hada Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about hepatitis. So let's get right into it. So what is hepatitis? Hepatitis is the inflammation of the tissue of the liver. The most common cause of this disease is by viral infection. However, the disease can also occur secondary to heavy alcohol intake, certain medications, toxins, other infectious diseases, autoimmune diseases, and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is liver inflammation and damage that is caused by a buildup of fat in the liver. So as you can see, the causes of hepatitis are quite broad. So hepatitis actually means the inflammation of the liver or the tissue that makes up the liver. And some of the causes we mentioned here are alcohol, certain viruses, certain medications, some toxins. We can also have an autoimmune form of the disease in which the body makes these autoantibodies or these antibodies that attack normal healthy tissue. And we can also have non-alcoholic forms, which is a buildup of fat in the liver. So these are all the different causes of hepatitis. So in today's video, we are going to focus on a specific type of viral hepatitis. And this form of hepatitis is caused by a specific virus. So viral hepatitis is classified into five different types because each one of them express different symptoms and require different forms of treatments. So there are five main types of viral hepatitis. They are hepatitis virus type A, hepatitis virus type B, hepatitis virus type C, hepatitis virus type D, and hepatitis virus type E. So in today's video, we are going to just focus on viral hepatitis A, which is also commonly known as Hep A. So let's go a little further in the presentation. So what is hepatitis A? The hepatitis A disease is caused by the hepatitis A virus. The virus is spread primarily when an uninfected or unvaccinated individual ingests food or water that is contaminated with the feces of an infected person. This tells us that the virus is spread by a fecal oral transmission. The disease is also closely related with inadequate sanitation and poor personal hygiene and is a self-limited disease that does not result in chronic infection. So what we gather from the disease so far is that this form of hepatitis is caused by the hepatitis A virus and the actual disease manifests in only people who are unvaccinated previously or have been unaffected at a previous stage in life. The disease we also know is passed from person to person via oral fecal route and is more common in patients with inadequate sanitation and poor hygiene practices. So another point that is definitely worth mentioning in this disease is that unlike the other viral forms of hepatitis, hepatitis A is actually just an acute form of the disease that does not progress into chronic stages. So this actual virus just causes an acute form of inflammation and a disruption in the function of the liver, but will not cause the disease over a chronic period. So hepatitis B and hepatitis C is known to go on to form a chronic stage of hepatitis, which is a chronic inflammation that eventually leads to liver cirrhosis and in end stages, cancer of the liver. But in hepatitis A, it is just a short acute form of the disease that does not progress into any chronic form of the disease. So what are the causes of hepatitis A virus? So if you remember in the slide previous to this, we said that the virus has a fecal oral transmission and that is basically the basis of the spread of the disease. Hepatitis A is caused by a virus that infects liver cells and causes inflammation. This inflammation affects the ability of the liver to function normally. The virus most commonly spreads when a person eats or drinks something contaminated with fecal matter. So here again, we said that the virus toxins and particles remain in the stool of the infected person. And when one drinks any form of fruits or vegetables or water that is contaminated with these fecal toxins or viral particles, they will develop the disease. They can also develop the disease if they eat food handled by someone with the virus who doesn't thoroughly wash their hands after using the toilet, eating raw shellfish from water polluted with sewage of the infected person, being in close contact with a person who's infected, even if that person has no signs or symptoms. And finally, having sex with someone who has the virus. So now let's get into some signs and symptoms of hepatitis A. The first symptoms of hepatitis A infection can be mistaken for the influenza virus, but some individuals, especially children, may exhibit no symptoms at all. 
Symptoms typically appear two to six weeks after the initial infection because this specific virus has an incubation period. The signs and symptoms of hepatitis A virus may include sudden nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain or discomfort, especially in the upper right side beneath the lower ribs by the liver, having clay-colored bowel stools and dark urine, having a loss of appetite and fatigue, having low-grade fever and joint pain, noticing yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes, which is called jaundice, having intense itching or experiencing encephalopathy. The diagnosis of hepatitis A. Although the hepatitis A virus is only excreted in the feces towards the end of the incubation period, we will be able to detect specific IgM antibodies in the blood much sooner. The IgM antibody is only present in the blood following an acute hepatitis A infection. It is detectable from 1 to 2 weeks after the initial infection and persists up to 14 weeks. The presence of IgG antibodies in the blood means that the acute stage of the illness has passed and the person is now immune to further infection. IgG antibodies indicate a past infection and are also found in the blood of people following vaccination. During the acute stage of the infection, the liver enzyme alanine transferase or ALT will show greatly increased blood levels. This enzyme is released from the liver cells damaged by the virus. So if we just go back to the slide before this, when we spoke about the signs and symptoms, it says symptoms typically appear two to six weeks after the initial infection because this virus has an incubation period. And this is something to keep in mind when we talk about the diagnosis. Because this virus has this so-called incubation period, the person can be infected with the virus and may not know for up to six weeks before the signs and symptoms start to appear. The only way to know for sure before the appearance of signs and symptoms is by a blood test. And in this test, we can measure the IgM antibody and this will be present after one to two weeks after the initial infection and can persist up to 14 weeks. So if you look at my graph on the right, we see the IgM, which is this broken red line. You can see after one to two weeks, it starts to peak. And that is how we are able to diagnose a hepatitis A much sooner before the onset of symptoms and signs. So another thing that we can detect on the blood test is the enzymatic level of the alanine transferase enzyme. And as you can see, it peaks quite a bit and is shown here in this dark blue line after someone is infected with the disease. So the ALT will rise to tell us that the liver is sending out sort of a distress signal to say that there is injury happening at the level of the liver tissue. And because that virus is causing the inflammation and irritation of the liver, the liver is going to release this enzyme sort of like an SOS just to tell our body that something is going wrong at that point. So the two main things that we can use for the diagnosis before the period of six weeks is the IgM antibody titer as well as the ALT level in the blood. So after six weeks, the hepatitis A virus will be present in the stool and we are able to test the stool and diagnose it quite easily. Something also to keep in mind that was important in the slide is that people who have had a previous hepatitis A infection or have been vaccinated for the hepatitis A virus will have IgG antibodies. And once these patients have either the vaccination or a previous infection, they won't be prone to the development of the disease. So now let's talk about the treatment of hepatitis A. No specific treatment for hepatitis A is currently known. The recovery from symptoms following infection may take several weeks or months, and the medications which are prescribed are aimed at maintaining comfort and adequate nutritional balance, including replacements of fluids lost from vomiting and diarrhea. One should avoid alcohol and the use of medications. The liver will have difficulty processing medications and alcohol and can cause more liver damage. So as we said, the virus actually targets the liver and causes inflammation and liver damage at the level of the cells that make up the liver. So anything that can cause further toxicity or harm to the liver should be avoided. So this includes many medications that are metabolized at the level of the liver as well as alcoholic beverages. In patients whose liver failure is so complete that it has led to encephalopathy or cerebral edema, timely liver transplantation is often the only option. So, in very rare cases, in patients with hepatitis A, we can have an extreme case of viremia, in which the hepatitis A virus attacks the liver in such a drastic manner that the liver and the body is unable to fight back and the virus actually is able to destroy the functioning ability of the liver. And in this case, the only treatment option we have is a liver transplant.
And finally, I just want to say a few words about the vaccination for hepatitis A. Because the hepatitis A virus is generally spread from person to person and is easy to catch, vaccination is highly recommended. Although hepatitis A does not present with serious signs and symptoms, it is still dangerous. About 20% of people infected with hepatitis A infection have to be hospitalized. In very rare cases, the virus can cause liver failure and even death. Therefore, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Two types of vaccines currently exist for the hepatitis A virus. They are inactivated hepatitis A or live but attenuated hepatitis A. The vaccines are able to protect against the hepatitis A virus in more than 95% of cases for longer than 25 years. The hepatitis A vaccine was first introduced in 1995 and since then has saved millions of people around the world from becoming infected. So basically the take home message here is definitely get your vaccinations, make sure that your vaccinations are up to date so that you will not develop these diseases in the future. And that brings us to the end of this video on hepatitis A. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. I hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. If you'd like to download a copy of the presentation, you may click the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.